Okay, so in the following video, we will find the given integral. As we are integrating a rational function, we must use the method of partial fraction. The first step is to consider our degrees of both polynomials. And so on the numerator, we have a degree 3 polynomial. On the denominator, we have a degree 2 polynomial. As 3 is greater than 2, we must first perform long division. So let us divide x cubed plus 1 by x squared plus 3x minus 10. So what times x squared gives x cubed? Simply x multiplied through by x, which gives you x cubed plus 3x squared minus 10x. We subtract x cubed minus x cubed cancels. Then we have no x squared, so 0 minus 3x squared, negative 3x squared. There's no multiple of x, so 0 minus negative 10x is positive 10x. And 1 minus, there's no constant term, 1 minus 0 is plus 1. The degree is 2, here we have 2. 2 is not less than 2, so we have to perform one more step in our long division. So what times x squared is negative 3x squared? Of course, this is simply negative 3 multiply through by negative 3, so you get negative 3x squared, negative 9x, positive 30. We subtract, negative 3x squared minus itself cancels, 10x minus negative 9x gives you 10 plus 9, 19x, 1 minus 30, negative 29. Now we have a degree 1 polynomial. Here we have degree 2. As 1 is strictly less than 2, this completes our long division. This is of course a quotient of the long division. This is of course the remainder. So, we know now that this rational function, as a result of long division, is equal to the quotient x minus 3 plus the remainder, so 19x minus 29, over the divisor, x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now you can see, instead of integrating the rational function as is, we'll integrate this form coming out of long division. Now the integration of this will be trivial as it is a polynomial, so it will remain to integrate this rational function now where the degree of the numerator, 1, is strictly less than the degree of the denominator, which is 2. And we know that to integrate such a rational function we have to break it down into partial fractions. So the first step will be to factor our denominator if possible it should be fairly easy to see by inspection that x squared plus 3x minus 10 factors as <coughs> sorry as x minus 2 times x plus 5. As we were looking for two real numbers whose product was negative 10, check, and whose sum was positive 3, check. So now let's break this down into a sum of partial fractions. So you want 19x minus 29 over x minus 2 times x plus 5 into a sum of partial fractions. Well, both factors show up only once, so they will each give us a single partial fraction. So we'll have over x minus 2 plus over x plus 5. Both factors are linear polynomials, so our numerator in each case is a constant. As always, we want an equality between polynomials, so let's multiply through both sides by our denominator. 
which will give us that 19x minus 29 is equal to a times. We'll have x minus 2 times x plus 5 over x minus 2, so these will cancel, and we're left with x plus 5 plus b times x minus 2 times x plus 5 over x plus 5. These will cancel, and we're left with b times x minus 2. Now, as we have two linear factors, we can choose appropriate values of x to solve for one coefficient at a time. So let's choose x equals 2. So if x equals 2, then we'll have 19 times 2, that's 38, minus 29, which gives you 9. This would be equal to well, 2 minus 2 is 0 times b is 0, and we'll have 2 plus 5, 7, 7, 8. So 9 equals 7, 8, divide across by 7, and so a is simply 9 over 7. Well, to isolate for b, we will eliminate a by choosing x to be negative 5. And if we do so, well, what do we have? Negative 5 times 19, well, 5 times 10, 50. 5 times 10, 45. That's negative 95. Negative 29 will give us, well, 9 plus 2, 11, so minus 110. 5 plus 9, 14, so minus 124. This will be equal to, if you plug in here, x equals negative 5. This will be 0 times 8, which goes away. Negative 5 minus 2, negative 7, times b. And if you divide across both sides by negative 7, you get that b is 124 divided by 7. And now we have our two coefficients, so we have the partial fraction decomposition of our rational function. And so in the end, instead of integrating the initial rational function directly, we will integrate the result of the long division, the polynomial, plus now not the remainder over the divisor, but now it's partial fraction decomposition as we have the two coefficients. So let me just rewrite this and call it, say, i. So in the end, the integral i will be the integral of the quotient x minus 3 plus this rational function, which now as a sum of two partial fractions will be 9 over, tw nine over 7 over x minus 2. plus b over x plus 5, which is 124 over 7, over x plus 5. And now the integration is going to be very straightforward. If you integrate x by the power rule, you get x squared over 2. If you integrate 3, you get negative 3x, plus the 9 over 27 can be factored out as a constant multiple, so 9 over 27, and you're left with the integral of 1 over x minus 2. This is, of course, the ln, an absolute value of x minus 2, plus, the same goes for the last rational function, 124 over 7 is a constant multiple, you can factor it out, which will leave you with the integral of 1 over x plus 5, which again is the ln, an absolute value of x plus 5, and finally, we add plus c. And so we're done. Now, one thing that you really have to keep in mind is always first check the degree of the numerator and the denominator. 
if the degree of the numerator is larger than or equal to the degree of the denominator, as was the case here, we have to first perform long division. And then what comes out as the remainder of your long division, then you want to decompose this rational function into a sum of partial fractions. And hopefully, as in this case, this will yield a fairly straightforward integration problem. And that's it.